So in this video, I'll be talking about some of the recent changes that IRS is yeah, kind of thinking about in terms of the post-graduation work permit. I've seen a couple of videos and people have been asking a couple of questions about that. Is post-graduation work permit going to be scrapped? Who are those that are going to be eligible for post-graduation permit? When these changes are implemented, if I'm already studying in Canada, am I going to be affected? If I have already gotten admission to apply to come and study in Canada for January 2025 or September 2025, am I going to be affected? So in this video, I'll give a breakdown as to the different sections uh, in this proposal. Uh, mind you, this has not been implemented yet, so it's still in the preliminary phase. So the reason why videos like this are important is to help you make informed decision. One of the, uh, if you check uh, the Toronto Star, the Star dot com, uh, they posted something, and the title of the article was "Immigration Department Documents Hint at Changes to." international students work permit okay and the highlight of that whole article is the fact that foreign workers will have to graduate from programs that are tied to labor shortages under the proposed changes to the international document obtained by the star now what does this mean is that they're kind of thinking about do we need to give postgraduate work permit to everybody that meets the eligibility? You know, before now, you need to graduate from a private institute, uh, from a private university or public college. Okay, private partner colleges are no longer eligible. So, for private university, public colleges, you know, if you graduate from them, and the if they are eligible for it, they offer postgraduate work permit eligible programs. You know, you will be eligible for work. That has been eligibility, and that has been on for a long time. Okay, so let's go in detail and explore this and see how you know if it makes sense. You know, what are some of the potential challenges that international students might have in the future? Now, one of the first now I always tell people is if you're trying to clean up the society or you know, you always want to start from your house and ask myself, is everything okay in my own house? Okay, before you will think about outsiders, okay? So in cases like this where they're proposing some changes, I believe that they have thought about it or they are thinking about it and asking themselves, is this good? Is this the best thing for us? Okay, um, and with international students being able to get post-graduation work permit, how is it helping us as a country? How is it bettering our, you know, meeting our labor market demand and all of those things? I believe those are some of the thought process that they are having. Now, uh, one of the things that they've mentioned, okay, that international students, just to reiterate that, international students will have to graduate from programs that are tied to labor shortages and they are adding something which was never there before that they will have to meet new language requirements to get a work permit after graduations, you know, uh, under some of the changes that have been contemplated by the Canada immigration. So I'm kind of, so what that means is that while you're in school, you may have to write an English test, okay, before you graduate. You may have to write an English test and meet a certain criteria, you know, to be eligible to apply for work permit, right? So one of the things I'm kind of asking myself, if you do this now, I, you know, knowing that this will only expire after two years. So does it mean if you write your English test now and after two years, you have not gotten your PRO? You are planning to apply for a PRO. Now you have to apply for, you have to do another English test because it's two years validity. So those are, you know, some things that one should be thinking about. And they said that with a cap in place to rein in the number of international students, the immigration minister, Mark Miller, has recently hinted at some of the common changes to 
the rules of post graduation work permit. Now, what they've done is that a survey has been distributed by each department to different colleges and university, and they, they've offered some glimpses as to what these changes might encompass, okay, because they don't want to make the decision alone. They want to make sure that all of the colleges, the university, they are also the provinces as well, you know, they are also airing their opinion as to this effect. What it mentions that under this plan, every or academic programs that are going to be coded to correspond to Canada's National Occupation Classification, NOC. So this what this means is that programs that meet the educational requirement of the jobs that are projected to uh, experience labor shortage in the long run because they continuously do projections and ask themselves, what kind of programs do we need to be able to fill in these certain types of jobs in the future, right? Maybe as people retire, what are some of the things that are going to be, you know, available? Now, uh, they said that the proposed changes are to align the post graduation work permit eligibility with labor market needs while reducing the overall volume of post graduate work permit holders. Okay, so these are all a bit to reduce the call down migration, to reduce the number of international students, and even those that are getting a uh, work permit, right? And these to them will increase the right likelihood that international students have uh, labor market uh, outcomes that are commensurate with their education and training. Okay, so you studied a course. Is this something that is in demand? Is it going to feel a labor shortage in Canada? Now, for more than 10 years, okay, international students, they've been able to, you know, you know study in Canada, get their post graduation work permit upon graduation if you meet the criteria that I have mentioned before. Before now, whether um, or not that particular course is relevant to Canadian economy need, it doesn't matter, okay? Provided you are eligible, based on what they've outlined, you are eligible. It doesn't matter whether it's related to the labor shortage uh, need or not. Of course, you know all of the issues around international students that made them to impose a cap to the number of, of, of study permits that will be issued you know, for the next two years. So they're kind of still, um, you know, uh, that cap is still on. Now, the survey questions that they released, there are about eight uh, questions that were included in the survey, which I think is very important. Number one is that if the postgraduate work permit, or the, the work permit eligibility were restricted, based solely on occupation in demands and corresponding programs of study, which occupations should be included based on the names of those areas? So based on the response, I think they're going to compile a list and say, oh, the nursing, engineering, you know, these health-related areas, these are the occupations that will be included and say, if you study and you get a job in this occupation, you will be eligible. Second one is what, like, if there are any courts that should be exempted from these changes, what would that be? For example, are you going to say we are excluding the Francophone students, or are you going to say uh, those that are doing graduate degree programs will be exempted? For example, if you are doing master's or PhD, you will be exempted. If you do master's, it doesn't matter whether a program it's in demand or not, you will be eligible, right? So these are some of the talk that I kind of thinking about. For example, business per se is not really an in demand course, okay? But what I kind of think of, what about if somebody do an MBA or master's in management, for example, you know? So is it something that should be exempted from these changes? The other one, which is uh, pretty going to be tough, and what is new is that for international students, will they be required to demonstrate proof of job offer that are aligned with the occupation shortage list in order to hold a postgraduate work permit beyond one year? Which means if you graduate, you can be eligible to apply for one year. 
Now, after that one year, before you'll be able to extend, maybe to get another one year or three years, as the case may be, you must have a job offer that is aligned with that occupational demand. Before now, once you are you graduate, they give you three years. Whether you get a job that is related to economic shortage or no, it doesn't really matter. You get it, you get it. Don't have to apply to extend it at any point in time. Another one is, should any other eligibility criteria, for example, uh, you have a language or provincial support apart from job offer, be applied to uh, postgraduate, uh, postgraduate work permit holders that are seeking to extend their permit past one year, which means should we add language or should we say uh, before you can extend your postgraduate work permit beyond one year, you need to have maybe a form of provincial nomination or any kind of thing from the province to say that, yes, this person is working in an area that meets the economic demand of our province, okay? So that is part of it. Now, another part of the survey is that what is your view on applying this labor uh, market-based uh, changes to post-graduation will permit eligibility to all graduates upon commerce announcement this year? So it means they are kind of trying to... is really getting closer, okay? Now, the thing about immigration is that the fact that they are thinking about this thing alone, it means they are serious about it, okay? So what I say is, should they apply this to every graduate, maybe those that are currently studying and are yet to graduate, should this apply to them, okay? Or uh, should we just let those that are already start uh, studying in Canada at a time of implementation, you know, not be affected by these new proposed changes, which it, it might be a little bit devastating. If I, I wouldn't call it devastating per se, I would say challenging for international students. If this is implemented and you are still studying, and maybe your course is not really at in demand. But this is one thing I've noticed over time. Almost after two, three years of graduation, majority of the people will start working in an area that is an in-demand. Let me give you an example. Somebody may study a course that is, uh, let's say, history. I'm just using that as, because I know that is not, I'm just giving, using an example. You're studying history. After graduation, Maybe you pick up a few skills in business analytics or Google certificates and you go into IT. So at the end of the day, you did not graduate from an in-demand course, but you are now working in an in-demand area. I believe that is the reason why they are saying, what about if you give you if you give me one year? It doesn't matter what kind of job you have in that one, it doesn't matter. But if you want to extend, now we need proof to show that you are now working in an area that is an in-demand, that, that is in-demand. So I believe, you know, as they continue to do this, they may also make some kind of changes to PR, right? Because if you already have the in-demand job, then the possibility of you contributing to the Canadian economy is already high. So with that, you may, you know, there might be some changes in the future, you know, just kind of thinking about it. Now, one of the things that they have said is that immigration officers, they are now seeking feedback from most of the post-secondary educations uh, about the prospect of permanent residence. This is what I was talking about for international graduates with jobs, with job offers in in-demand sectors under their, their, you know, respective province or immigration program. I mean, there are a lot of pro provinces already offer the, that if you graduate and you have a job offer in an area that is and that is in demand, of course, there are a much higher chances for you to get permanent residence in Alberta, in Ontario, in, in New Brunswick, and all that is already in progress. Now, our thing is that they've mentioned is that are there gaps 
between the labor market needs of identified in your province's existing streams, okay? And if are there going to be any amendments, you know, to ensure that they remain, you know, responsive to graduates and to postgraduate work permit holders, okay? So very important. Now, they said that to assess the access to an open work permit in Canada, uh, after graduation has been a very strong incentive for people to come and study in Canada, okay? Because, you know, uh, it's good that you have the prospect to be able to stay in the country and, you know, work, right? So, uh, some, a lot of experts have said that if you, you know, make a change to some of the post-graduation work permit eligibility, it will enable them to meet the objective of restoring the integrity of the international uh, education program. And that impro includes improving the uh, candidate's qu uh, quality in the uh, permanent residence pool and aligning their studies with different labor needs. The last changes to the post-graduation work permit has been in April of 2008. So it's really been a long, long time.